What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today I got a super fun video for you guys because here I am. I got the Mavic 3 here and we got a super beautiful sunset right now. Right now we're at one of my favorite spots in the bay. This is called Grizzly Peak and there's an absolutely amazing view. You got Oakland over here, you got Berkeley, you have San Francisco in the distance, you got the Golden Gate Bridge and I think this spot is an absolutely great spot for the Mavic 3 because honestly the Mavic 3 is probably my favorite long range drone. I know you guys know I love FPV, but sometimes I just want to chill out and get some really nice, vast, you know, really huge shots because the Mavic 3 really excels at flying super far. I mean, the connection on this thing is absolutely insane. You can go probably like five miles out. I haven't been that far and I wouldn't recommend it, but a lot of times I can go so much farther than what I can on my usual FPV drone. So I think that's a huge benefit to a drone like this, the Mavic 3. So yeah, right now, it's about sunset. I'm gonna wait for the sun to dip a little bit more so we can get some nice color, some nice textures in the sky, but I'm just gonna play around with the Mavic 3 as usual, get a bunch of different various shots. I might play around with the seven times lens up here, get some cool kind of like telephoto type shots. Um, yeah, maybe try out some waypoints so maybe I can come here later on a different sunset and, and try my waypoint flight again so I can kind of cut between the two different sunsets. So yeah, we're just gonna experiment, have some fun. And in addition, I think this is a great place to fly because as you can see, there's just like no obstruction between me and the drone. And that's usually a big problem when you're flying drones, like when trees or buildings get in the way, that's when your connection can be at jeopardy and you can risk losing your drone that way. But honestly, out right here, we're at such a high elevation that there's gonna be really good connection between me and the drone. So actually I might do some range tests and just to see how far I can fly out because I can really see pretty well all the way out there, all the way to Oakland. So. I'm just gonna kind of test it out and really see how far this thing can go too. I don't wanna push it too far, but I mean, this drone is probably my most reliable drone and has a really good return, return to home feature. It's a really smart drone. So yeah, all in all, I think we're just gonna have some fun and yeah, experiment as usual. All right guys, since I'm just trying to make a quick video, I'm probably just gonna shoot in regular picture profile. I'm not gonna shoot in log. So since I'm not shooting in log, I'm probably gonna use ND8. Usually when I'm shooting in log, it forces you to shoot at 400 ISO at least. So you need the strongest ND possible, which is around usually ND32. But as I said, since I'm just trying to do a nice quick edit, I'm gonna shoot in normal mode. So probably ND8 is gonna work fine. All right, so as usual guys, when you're shooting, you wanna make sure that your ISO is at the lowest it possibly can be. So in this case, ISO 100. Shutter speed one over 50, since we're shooting at 24 frames, 4K. And then that leaves us with the aperture. And that's why I love the Mavic 3. And that's why I recommend getting the Mavic 3 versus an Air 2S or a Mini 3 Pro, because this is the only drone in the consumer series of DJI drones where you can adjust the aperture. So, so if you're a cinematographer, I think that's a great feature to have because you can leave your shutter speed locked in, leave your ISO locked in, and that leaves you with just your aperture. So I think that's a great feature to have if you're really into filmmaking. So yeah, let's lock in our settings here. So one tip I have for you guys for getting super sick cinematic shots is you want your shots to be as dynamic as possible and you want as many objects moving as you can. So what I mean by that is, for example, in this case, I want my drone to be flying just barely above the trees. And when you do that, it's gonna look super sick because the trees are gonna be moving below your frame. There's gonna be lots of nice cinematic motion blur if you get your exposure correctly and you use ND filters. So I think that makes a huge difference because what most beginners do is they just put their drone up super high and they just fly and the shots look pretty boring because there's just nothing going on. There's nothing really moving. So by really taking advantage of your environment and lowering the drone as much as you can to really add as much movement to your image, that's gonna create the, a really nice cinematic shot. So for example, right now, I'm gonna lower my drone kind of like just above the trees here. You don't want to go so low enough where you're going to risk crashing, but you know, just have good spatial awareness. So here I am here, have a nice visual line of sight on the drone as well. And then once you can't really see the drone as well, that's when you really, really want to just look at the screen here. So I think that's why flying FPV is so important because since I fly so much FPV, flying the Mavic just by looking at the RC Pro here is just super intuitive. I have good spatial awareness of where my obstacles are. 
All right, guys, so as I was saying earlier, this is why I love the Mavic 3. The Mavic 3 really excels in just really vast, huge spaces. Like, sure, I could bring my FPV drone here, but honestly, I think FPV really excels in tight spaces when you're hitting a lot of gaps and stuff. But when you're getting like these really vast helicopter type shots of just like nice big areas, and especially in a place like this where I have really good line of sight, I think the Mavic 3 is super good. All right guys, that was sick. We just got a bunch of shots with the regular wide angle lens. I was shooting at normal picture profile. And next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna test out that seven times zoom camera. I think that's one of the biggest features that separates obviously the Mavic 3 from the Mavic 3 Classic is you have this really cool telephoto zoom, which is about the equivalent of like, I think it's like 160 millimeters. So I think it's gonna be super sick to get some shots with that right now. But it's really important that you actually take off the ND filter. I think one of the flaws of the DJI ND filters is that the ND filter also covers that top one too. And other companies sell some filters where it just covers the bigger lens and not the seven times zoom lens. And I think I might get those because when you're up in the air, you can't really switch between them because like I said, the top zoom lens, you can't use any ND filters with it because just the quality is not good enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off this ND filter, put the clear filter back on, and then we're gonna get some shots with the seven times zoom lens out in the city. All right guys, so in order to use the zoom lens, all you gotta do is just press that little seven here. Bloop. And sick. And since I am a cinematographer, I always wanna use my manual settings. So make sure you hit that pro mode, not auto mode. And the first thing you'll notice is you no longer have control over your aperture. Since we switched lenses to the top little lens on the top, you can only control the ISO and the shutter speed. So that's one important thing to keep in mind. And sweet, in the new update, they also added the new feature to shoot 4K25. Before you could only shoot 4K30 in the zoom lens mode, but now they add 25 frames, which is awesome. And you could actually shoot up to 4K50 FPS, so that's pretty sick actually. But for my sake, I'm gonna do 4K25 for a nice cinematic frame. And yeah, as you can see here, the aperture is locked in at f4.4. You cannot change that. But yeah, right off the bat, it looks pretty sick. Like already right now with this new lens, it looks kind of like Blade Runner right now. Like everything is super telephoto. Everything looks more kind of like larger than life. It's pretty sick actually. But one thing to keep in mind is that when you switch lenses to the seven times lens, you do lose a lot of spatial awareness because as I said before, when you have that wide angle lens, you can actually fly the Mavic like an FPV with the RC Pro, everything's nice and bright. But once you switch to the seven times lens, you really can't see where you are that well. Everything is locked in. So you gotta be careful about where you're flying because I think it is easier to crash when you're in this mode here.
All right guys, so as you can see, the Mavic 3 is such a beast for long range aerial cinematography. I was able to fly all the way down there, probably like 10,000 feet away, still had really good connection. But one thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is to really watch your battery life. Because when you're going so far out there, you really gotta have enough battery to come back. So always keep that in mind. Make sure you have a lot of batteries, charge your batteries. Don't take off with like a half dead battery because that's how you lose your drone. But um, yeah, always keep in mind your level and stuff. But um, overall, I think that was awesome. Hope you guys can see the difference between the seven times zoom lens and the main camera. And yeah, hope you guys got something out of that. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.